Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. And now, before we go down to Pine Ridge, here's a suggestion for that weekend party that you're probably planning. Try serving Horlicks malted milk or Horlicks with sandwiches. You'll be surprised what an interesting change it makes. One your guests will appreciate, too. They'll prefer it to the usual tea or coffee because Horlicks is so delicious and refreshing. It won't interfere with the bridge game, either. It's so easy to prepare. You just have to add sufficient of the powder to water or milk. Mix thoroughly, and it's ready to serve. It isn't necessary to add milk or any flavoring unless you desire it. Remember that when you're stumped for something to give your friends. Horlicks certainly makes a welcome change. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. In a desperate effort to secure feed for their animals, Lum and Abner have been accepting feed as admission to their circus. The response has been great. So good, in fact, that Squire Skimp is trying to obtain a third interest in the business. <laughs> as we look in on Pine Ridge today, Abner and Cedric are over at the circus grounds looking after the animals. And we find Dick Huddleston over at the Jot and Down store talking with Lum. Listen. Oh, yeah, they had the tent packed to the brim last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Folks were there from clean over Cherry Hill. Is that right? Oh, yeah. We've got enough feed on hands now to run us all next week. Well, that's one worry you've got off your mind anyway, Lum. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going into the circus business right now. You know, I hate to admit to it, Dick. <laughs> Dog, I don't believe Abner made a pretty good deal when he take it over that circuit. <laughs> well, I believe you fellas can make some money with it, Lum, if you run it right. Well, I, I think I'll get Grandpappy Spears to run my store for me over here and just spend all my time helping Abner run the circus. Uh, what'd you do about Squire Skimp, Lum? You gonna let him in on it with you? Well, we ain't decided yet. Uh, we told Squire last night we'd think it over and let him know today. Uh, <laughs> well, of course, it ain't none of my business, Lum, but... If I were you fellas now, I'd, I'd think that over mighty careful before I took him in as a third partner. Well, I don't know, Dick. We need somebody that knows something about the circus business, and he claims he was with two or three circuses back in the 90s or something. Oh, yeah. yeah I heard him so, say last night that he'd been with Barnum and Bailey and Hagen Back Walk. Yeah, he ought to be just the feller we're looking for. Sure, Squire would make you a good man, Lum. He's a good promoter. I'll hand him that. He can put over most anything that he sets his head to do. Oh, yeah. You'd be good to stand out there in front and make them speeches about what all we've got inside the tent. You know, you yeah, hear... Yeah, man, or Barker, I believe they call him. Yeah, well, he can make a good or whatever they are. And, and he's got some good ideas about how a circus ought to be run. Sure, you? sure, but, Lum, there ain't no use in giving him a third interest in it, though. Well, of course, that's a proposition he made us. Yeah, but if you just hire him, Lum, I'm pay him so much a month, that's it. You mean not make him no partner in his talk? Well, I know, just pay him a salary. Salary? Yeah, just so much a month. There yes, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that's a thing to do. Sure. You fellas had enough dealings with Squire to know by this time that you can't put no trust in him. As long as he's working for you and can't get his hands on any of the money, why, you're all right. Oh, well, I ain't scared of him beating us out of nothing. I know him well enough to know that the body's got to keep his eye on him. Yeah, well, he'll beat you now if you don't watch him, I'll tell him yeah, that. Well, don't you worry about Squire getting the best of me. <laughs> you know that old lettered saying, it takes a crook to beat a crook. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> You don't believe that'll work very well. <laughs> anyway, I aim to see that you uh, don't get to handle none of the cash money. Yeah. Well, now, if you can arrange it that way, well, I believe you'll make you a good man. Wait a minute. Here comes Abner. Yeah. I hope he ain't made no deal with Squire already. That idea of yours there, Dick, about just hiring Squire to work on a salary is a good one, baby. Sure. And you can get him at your own price, Lum. Hire him for a song and sing it yourself. I could tell last night that he's awful anxious to get back in the circus business the way he talks. Oh, yeah. As quick as he come over and seen that sawdust around there in the tent, he's just like an old fire horse. Well, just... howdy, man, howdy. Well, come in, Abner. I'm glad you come over. Uh, you ain't saw Squire Skimp today, have you? Yeah, he was down there a while ago wanting to know what we decided, and I told him we hadn't had a chance to talk it over yet. Yeah. He'll be over here exactly. Oh, he will. Well, fine. And say, Dick, when I come by your store just now, your woman said to tell you to get on back over there. She's got to go to the Missionary Society meeting. By Jack, that's right. I'd forgot all about that. Well, I better get on back over there then, fellas. I'll see you fellas later then. Yeah, all right, Dick. Come back again. <laughs> I hope she don't give you no licking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was mad. Oh, well, she... You say Squire's coming over here? Yeah, he, he said he'd be over here exactly. Well, 
Abner, I, I've been turning that proposition of his and over in my mind, sort of backwards and forwards. And uh-huh. I figured out the best way to do is just to hire a squire to work for us. Ain't no need in giving him a third interest in the circus. Just, just put him on a salary. Yeah. Well, it'd be fine if he'll do it. Oh, well, he'll do it. You don't need to worry about that. The way he's hankering to get back in the circus business, we can hire him for a song and sing it ourselves. Oh, yeah, Bobby could tell you. Uh, uh, huh? Huh? Yeah, what was you said there about hiring Squire to sing? I never said nothing about him singing. I said we could hire him for a song and sing it ourselves. Well, what's the use to hire him if we're going to sing it ourselves? We ain't going to sing it ourselves. Well, regardless of who sings it, I don't believe we need no singing in the circus. Folks come there to see the animals. Well, Abner, you've got it all mixed up. Ain't nobody going to sing no song. Well, I'm proud you changed your mind about that. I never changed my mind. I never meant for nobody to sing in the first place. Oh, you're just joking about that, huh? <laughs> I thought you meant it. No, but that's just an old Eddard saying. I mean, the squire's so anxious to get in the circus with us that we can hire him cheap. Hire him for a song and sing it ourselves. Well, that's cheap enough. We, we better do that then if we can. Yeah, that was my views on it. That's a heap better than giving him a third interest. In oh, circus. yeah, I reckon it is, sure. Wait a minute, I believe that's, yeah. It's him coming up out there now. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, we can try it out on him anyway. Ain't gonna hurt nothing to try. Why, well, no. But I still got my doubts about him doing it, Mom. He's a hard fella to deal with. Well, hi, Squire. Come in, come in. Yeah, we were just waiting for you. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Come on back and sit down, Squire. We were just talking about you yeah. before you come in. Yeah, we sure were. <laughs> uh, we've got a little different proposition to offer you from what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah, uh, how this, Squire? She's only a bird in a gilded cage. A beautiful sight to see. You may think that she's happy and free from care. She's not so she seems to be. What do you think you're doing? Uh, Will you take it, Squire? Uh, uh, Take it? Uh, Will I take what, Abner? And will you work for that? Oh, for goodness sake, I know what he's doing. Well, I, I don't believe I know what you mean, Ed. Don't pay no attention to him, Squire. Sit down, sit down. Yeah, I never thought it'd work in the first place. Uh, Squire, me and Abner's been talking over this proposition of yours, and uh, whilst we'd love to have you in the circus with us, well, we ain't going to take in no third partner. Now, if you want to go and work for us on a salary, why, we're ready to talk business with you. Hmm. Well, now, that, uh, that uh, sort of depends, Lum, uh... How much of a salary do you gentlemen figure you can pay? Uh, with all the experience that I've had in this business, you know, I, I ought to command a pretty good salary. Well, I think so. Why, sure, yeah. Uh, tell you what we'll do, Squire. We'll start you off at $100 a month. A uh, hundred a month, huh? Yeah, and if their circus is going good and we're making money, we'll raise your salary along. Mm. Live and let live is my motto. Well, uh, I'll tell you, men. If you'll turn me loose, let me turn this into a number one circus. I'll take you up on that offer. Well, that's what we want you to do, Squire. Just take hold of it and show us where we can improve it. Yeah, well, now, you see the way it is now, man. Why, well, there's no show to it at all. It's just a collection of animals on display over there. Yeah. yeah. And there's some of them that I want to get shut off, too. Some of them we ain't got no use for over there. Like that cow. She ain't no circus animal. No. Well, now, right there is where you're wrong, Abner. You was telling me yesterday about that professor from Shady Grove giving her a name. She's a sacred cow from India. Yeah, that's that's what he called her, Abner. Yeah, that's right. But I know we ain't got no use for them two hound dogs over there. Abner, them two dogs is imported English foxhounds. Don't forget that. The two favorite hunting dogs of King George himself. Yeah. Well, I do know. Well, I'll bet old Ike Reynolds would kick himself for ever swapping them if he knowed that. And uh, it's a good source to get the members of our flea circus from, too. Yeah, the thing we got to get shut of is them rabbits. Uh, them just a nuisance over there, yeah. just taking the place. Last count Cedric made over there said we had 411 of them. One of our main attractions, Lum, one of our main attractions. Yeah. The largest single collection of genuine Belgium hair rabbits in the world today. Well, I figure them rabbits will draw as many people in there as our white elephant will. White elephant. And we ain't got no white elephant, Squire. Well, no. <laughs> not now, men, not now. But we will have the only white elephant on exhibition in America today. You've got the elephant, and uh, I'll get the white horse. Oh. 
Well, we got to get shot of them white mice over there before they run the elephants clean off. Yeah, we sure have. No, 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 that's where you're wrong again, men. That's one of our biggest attractions right there. Why, men, we're the only people up today that are able to exhibit before the good people of this country a collection of sacred white mice honored in worship at the Temple of Abadab. And now that line you've got over there is the most ferocious beast in captivity today, brought to this country with the great expense to the government and the loss of... Wait, wait a minute, wait. where about you going, Abner? I'm going over to that circus to look at them animals again. Well, that's all you've did for a week, you sat over and looked at them. Yeah, but I never knowed how wonderful they were till just now. I know that we've got something there. <laughs> well, we can see right now that Squire is going to make a valuable addition to the circus. <laughs> well, folks, it's certainly swell when listeners write our advertising sketches for us. And that's just what Mrs. R.F.M. of Wheeling, West Virginia did. The following scene took place only a few days ago. Mrs. M. has come to meet her son, Tommy, at the school gym. We're going to hear what happened. Listen. Why, Mom, what are you doing here at the gym? Hello, Tommy. I've got a surprise for you. Daddy's working late at the office tonight. Those income tax returns, you know. So I'm taking you to the 5 o'clock show at the rent. Gee, Mother, David Copperfield? Oh, boy, that's swell. Yes, but come on. We'll have to hurry. It's half past four already. Okay, Mother. But say, when do we eat? Eat? What a child. Don't tell me that you're hungry at half past four in the afternoon. I'll say I'm hungry. You would be too if you've been playing basketball on top of two examinations. I'll soon fix that. What, the examination? Oh, yeah. no, your appetite's silly. See, I brought a flask of these tablets along. Oh. What are they, Mom? Candy? Oh, of course they're not, Tommy. You know how candy spoils your appetite for dinner. They're Horlicks. Chocolate malted milk tablets. Oh, boy, they're swell. I know. All the kids like them. I'll say they do. I know what you like, and I know what's good for you, too. You won't need anything else besides these before dinner. And they won't spoil your appetite, either. And Mrs. F.M. is right. A few tablets dissolved in the mouth are great for warding off hunger without spoiling appetite. They taste swell, too. Youngsters love them. This is Carlton Brickert. Speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.